Hello, everybody. Today we're going to be going over the oral response part of the exam. And now just go into question one. Uh, explain how you got the pKa's for all of the alien amino acids. Now, for the earth sort of alien amino acids, I just extrapolated uh, some pKa's from the uh, canvas page because I determined that the extra methylene group in the backbone isn't really going to have that severe of an impact on the pKa. But for some of the purely alien ones, um, I looked into uh, functional groups for them. Uh, so like, what's the pKa of a primary amine? Um, and that worked for most of them. I tried uh, wherever I could to get uh, as accurate as possible. Um, like for one, it's a, just a carboxylic acid with one carbon in between a car the carbonyl of the backbone. So I tried to find a pKa of a carboxylic acid that was very similar to that. Uh, now there was one that I had to dig a little deeper on, and that was one where there was a thiol group attached to an aromatic group. And for that, you know, you, you can ignore a little bit of the other stuff, um, but that is very uh, unignorable. You know, there's such a, a resonance stabilization effect for that, that it makes the thiol significantly more acidic. And so for that, I looked into uh, benzene thiol um, to try and determine a little more of the pKa's. But yeah, and then uh, moving on to question two, uh, I chose thrombin. It's a, you know, coagulant regulator. Uh, it helps decoagulate, it helps coagulate blood. And in terms of structure, you know, I've got it right here. We can look at uh, the alpha helices. Now, thrombin doesn't really have any buried alpha helices. Most of them are solvent exposed. Um, and with that, you know, we have the classic uh, residues. We've got, you know, a lot of hydrophobic ones on the outside, like lysine. And then you can go back and they start getting a little more hydrophobic as it faces the protein. So you've got like isoleucine here, and then going out, you have uh, lysine again, and then going in, you have lysine, and then going closer to the protein, we have leucine. Um, so with that, you know, you have a solvent exposed uh, alpha helix with most of the residues facing towards the protein being hydrophobic, and most of the residues facing the outside being hydrophilic, because obviously that's the solvent. Um, and then for this, we've got um, some intra and intermolecular uh, disulfide bridges. So right here, I have all of the disulfide bridges highlighted in purple. And you can see that this molecule has some, you know, between the same subunit, uh, that being intra, and you have some, you know, that are connecting the two subunits together, that being interconnected. Um, so moving on, uh, I deleted the rest of the, the molecule, except for the beta sheets right here, just because it made them easier to visualize. And here we have uh, anti-parallel um, beta sheets going. And, you know, we have that classic beta sheet pattern. We've got nonpolar, polar, nonpolar, polar, nonpolar, polar. Um, and then finally, we have the ligand uh, interactions. Now there's a lot going on here. So I took away the rest of the molecules except for the ligand and all of the things interacting with it. And the ligand molecule specifically is highlighted in purple here. Now we see we have a lot of hydrogen bonding going on here. Um, but furthermore, we have it interacting with some groups like, uh, like histidine right here. You can see it's covalently bonded to that. And it's also covalently bonded to the serine over here. Um, yeah, you can see a lot of hydrogen interactions from the carbonyls of the molecule or the, uh, the amines going on here, but I'm running out of time. So uh, interesting fact about myself, at least professionally, is um, I work or I'm studying to be a microbiologist and I work at the CLE lab over by Fifield, which is a botanical lab that works to grow tastier tomatoes. Uh, it's pretty interesting and I enjoy work there. Uh, also, I do pottery in my spare time. I make a lot of faces. But uh, yeah, thank you very much.